Hello YouTube, Xtitte here. This video is about Bucket, a 30-point machine on Hack the Box where we get credentials from DynamoDB, upload a web shell to a local S3 bucket, and at the end exploit an HTML to PDF converter. So after the initial port scan, we can see that we just have port 80 and 22. So let's have a look at the website. This site doesn't seem too useful. Um, nothing really here. Seems there's some, some error loading stuff. So let's look at the source. And here at the bottom, we can see that this it tries to load some images from this s3.bucket.htb subdomain. So let's add that to burp and see what this page is about. Okay, there's this JSON message which just says running. So can't really do too much with it. Um, so what we're going to do is um, look for subdirectories with ff. First of all, going to add this to our hosts file as well, so we can use it in a shell. And as you can see, I already did that here. And I'm going to stop that early here. These are the two endpoints which are interesting. Um, first of all, there's health and there's a shell endpoint. So let's look at health. Um, here we can see that this is um, DynamoDB. Um, this is running. So let's look at shell. And here we get a strange redirect to this host name, um, which is maybe a local host name. Um, it can resolve and on this port. So you can see in the URL that it puts a slash at the end. So if we go back and go to shell again, but put the slash at the end. We can actually reach this um, AWS DynamoDB console, and it even has a DynamoDB shell, um, hence the shell endpoint, where we can type commands and yeah, basically interact with the database. So to interact with this database, um, we have to understand how this uh, JavaScript um, snippets are used and how the syntax is and so on, and there's this um, icon here. Um, if you click it, you can select an example, like we want to list tables, and it has the code here. And if you click here, it will just copy it, and you can run it. Um, it's complaining here that this limit is zero, so let's set it to something higher. And we can see that the query worked. Um, now we got listed the users table. And what you want to do now is um, see how this table is structured. So let's go back here. Um, the scrap table sounds good. So let's copy that. Um, replace this example table name with users. And run it. And here we can see how this table is structured. We have a username and a password basically. So let's see if we can find something to list them. Um, query sounds good, I guess. But it could also be scan. And I think in this case it was actually scan. So let's copy that again and change a few things. Actually, we can delete a lot of the example things here. And here we go. Basically, we get a list of username and passwords like we expected. And there are a couple of them, but so far we can't use them anywhere. Um, usually I would try to use them as SSH now, but I already know that they won't work. So we're not going to do that now. So what else do we have? Um, we know that there's an S3 bucket. Now we have to find some tool to interact with the S3 bucket. And one thing, one tool we can use is this menu tool, um, which is a pretty lightweight client for S3 and you can basically use most of the commands as free offers here. And it's pretty easy to install. There's just a wget to this binary and you execute it and that's basically it. I already downloaded it here. So let's look um, actually at the documentation, how to use it. Um, we're not going to use Docker here. So first we have to do this mc alias set with the key. Uh, we don't have any key, so we're not going to set one. 
And then after we have this alias, let's scroll down a bit. We can use MCLS on the bucket name. All right, let's try that. So as you can see, I already have this MC binary here. So we're going to run it, set an alias. Um, just going to call it s 3 htb and basically copy the command from the documentation, leave the access and secret tree empty. And now we have this alias and should be able to list um, the contents of this AD server directory. Um, why this directory? Um, we saw it earlier here in the uh, image links. And yep, that indeed works. And we can use this client to interact with the S3 bucket. So what we're going to do now is we are trying to upload something because we can see there's an index HTML in the images here. So this is what's being referenced here. And we have the suspicion that this whole web page is basically um, yeah, coming from the S3 bucket. So if we were to upload something here, like a text file or maybe something else, um, it would um, maybe show up in the web route and maybe we can leverage that to get a web shell later on. So let's create an example file, just a simple txt and then copy that, basically copy this file to the server and then do an ls so we can see if it actually worked and exists on the server. And this indeed seems to be the case. So let's try if this is actually appearing here. And this is not the case. So let's try on the S3 bucket. And here it doesn't exist either. So let's do an LS again. And it's actually gone. So I assume there's some script which is aggressively deleting our uploaded files. So let's try it again. And now this file exists. Let's look at the real page and here we don't have it. Um, but now it appeared. So what's probably happening in the background is as soon as we upload here, it will be on the S3 bucket and then some script will go and um, sync everything in this bucket to the real website. And we can use this to upload a web shell. Um, at this point, we don't really know uh, which kind of um, format we need, but um, something you can always try is PHP. And in this case, it will actually work. So let's create a simple PHP shell. Just going to do a pass through. Um, so we get a really simple shell. Let's upload that. And see if we can reach it here. Doesn't work yet, but I keep refreshing. Um, I think it should appear. Let's actually check if it was uploaded here. So here it exists. Just have to be a bit more patient. All right, and here it worked. So we can get a full shell here if you like, but it's not really required. Um, the interesting thing we want to get is from passwd because there's a user called Roy. And I'm going to save that username here. And we got some passwords from before. So now we can try them on SSH. And if you try all of them, eventually we'll find that this is the user on the box, uh, which we can use for SSH. So let's do that. And that worked. We got in as Roy and can read the user flag. So one thing I always do at this point is to grab LSE. And we're going to run it, um, wait for a bit, um, just in case there is some, some easy win here, some really easy privisk. So let's look um, for the output. 
nothing too interesting. Uh, usually I run it with the dash L1 parameter to get some more output, but in this case there won't be anything interesting here, so I can just do it like that. Um, let's look at the running processes. Here we can see this DynamoDB. But other than that, it doesn't seem to be so much going on. Let's look at open ports. This one we expected, uh, but uh, let's look at what port 8000 might be. Um, this is probably some web page, so let's forward the port. And this is new, we haven't seen this before, but it doesn't reveal too much. Just a lot of CSS, some HTML, nothing too interesting. So let's see if we can find this on disk maybe. Um, but before we do that, let's look at the home directory. Um, besides the flag, there's this project folder. Often these are hints at what to do. But in this case, I don't really think it has anything too interesting. Um, also not in the other files here. So let's try to find this uh, web app. So there's this bucket app. Let's see what that is. Index.php. Going to go to full screen here. And if you scroll all the way to the top, there's some PHP code here. So let's copy that. So we get some syntax highlighting. And let's go through the code a bit. This is expecting a post request, right? And it has to have a parameter called action, which is get alerts. And then this code will be executed. It will connect to the service we saw earlier. And it will do scan, which we saw in the beginning is um, basically the statement to get the contents of a table. If we look for an alerts table and wants the title to be ransomware. And if it finds this, it will go over all the items it found and will create this name variable, which is a random number.html. And then it will put it in a local directory called files um, with this name and the data that was in this um, table. And then it will run this Java command, which is this pd4ml demo.jar. Um, we'll look in a second what that could be. And it will basically use that to convert the HTML file, which is still the name variable and save it as this result.pdf. So now that we got an idea what this file is doing, um, we already have a pretty good idea how we could exploit it. Um, basically send a post request, um, have an action that contains get alerts, and then we create, before, before we send this post request, we create um, a table called alerts um, with this entry, uh, which has ransomware in the title. And now we only have to think about what this HTML should contain. So we can do something interesting with it. And the good way um, we can exploit this is just by having an iframe, which includes a local file. And this would essentially allow us to read a file as root. And so we could use it to just read the flag or a root private key or something like that. So let's try to actually exploit that. First of all, um, create um, the tables. So where's the shell here? So let's actually create a table. Do it like that. Straight copy it from the docs. Um, just change the table name to alerts. Right, it worked. And now we're going to insert this one item, which has the title ransomware and some data. And actually, we don't want it to be test because we already um, decided that we want to use an iframe here. So let's actually use this one. It's just um, an HTML file, which we need, and an iframe, which sources the um, private key of root. And can't really be seen here because of this button. Yeah, like that. 
So let's execute that. It was created and now we have to send this post request um, we mentioned earlier. So let's do that. And go to files. And we can see it created this HTML file and this result.pdf. So let's save that because um, at this point there's again some script that will clear this and we don't want that. So the only thing we have to do now is to copy this file to our box so we can view the PDF and just do, to use SCP here. And now we're just going to view this PDF. Here it is. And we have the private key. So I'm going to copy that, paste it into this file. And maybe you need some cleanup here. Um, I already cleaned it a bit. Um, but this is basically the root private key, so the only thing left is now to SSH as root. And we can read the root flag. So that's it for the box. Um, one thing I'd like to mention is that I created a Discord server um, for people to exchange ideas about boxes, um, discuss CDF challenges, um, maybe recent exploits and so on. So if you'd like to join, there's a link down in the description. And other than that, I'd be happy if you click the like button, subscribe, and see you next time.